Hello. Well, we're back. It's been a little over a week. <clears throat> and uh, got a project for us. And uh, this is a little less fine art. This is more of something fun to do. Uh, my stepdad, he is a blacksmith. And he makes these grills. So I thought it would be fun to make him a prop. So today we are going to work on wood burning a T-bone steak. So I figured that would be kind of fun. I know it's not fine art, but you know, fine art pieces are coming today. We're just going to have some fun. So now what I've done is take a piece of pine board and draw out a, you know, a rough shape of what I thought a good T-bone steak looks like. Well, it'll be bigger than this, and uh, um, I routed it out, and then I used, I believe it was like a quarter round, to kind of get some kind of rounded corners around here on both sides. So, and then I scorched it, and uh, kind of gives a nice little effect, and I went particularly heavy around the fatty, what it should be the fatty area, and the bone area and then kind of penciled in where the bone is. Now, <clears throat> a problem with scorching or going really aggressive sometimes with wood burners in cheap wood, I mean, this is a select board, a pine select, which is nicer than uh, most uh, pine boards. It has a lot less knots. It actually, it's supposed to have no knots, but you still get little areas of seepage from different... Uh, well, it's the sap, basically. And another very unfortunate side effect are... I don't know if you can see this. I'm trying to turn it into a few different angles. But there's a split right here. So I thought what I would do is draw the, the bone of the T-bone around there and blacken that as much as possible to try to cover that up. And it's not fine art. It's a prop. So um, that's okay. Um... One of the reasons I use linseed oil a lot, and I'm I'm not a profess you know professional carpenter by any means. I'm just a hack when it comes to that stuff. Um, mostly just a wood burner. That's my that's my trade. But um, I've noticed that when I put linseed oil on you know wood pieces that have a split, it'll hydrate the wood and cause it to kind of re-expand and tend to close those up. It's not foolproof, but you know there it is. So, we're going to get started here. Um, I don't know how much time I'll have to work on this video today. My wife needs to pick up a piece of furniture and guess who gets to lift it? <laughs> so, we'll get as much done as we can get done. Now, I'm just going to use a spoon for this because I just want to get some real quick heavy pro you know, progress. Um, this is not a fine art piece, like I said, so I'm not awful concerned about staying in the lines. You may wish to choose with a little, um, uh, ballpoint head first, and that's fine. You know, uh, it's a confidence level. Um, I've done this where enough times where I feel comfortable just doing it this way. So that's what I do. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to burn in and try to darken the bone area as much as possible. I've never done a T-bone stick before. <laughs> so I think it'd be silly if I had. But uh, and then after that I'm going to Put in the crisscross uh, char marks. Oh, 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 I forgot to tell you the whole reason I'm doing this, besides to help my my stepdad uh, sell his uh, grill sets. And by the way, his name is Bruce T. Garden. It's T. Garden Ironworks in Indiana, uh, stationed in Corona, Indiana, on US 6. Uh, if you look up Tea Garden Ironworks, I think that's all one word. 
Um, but look it up on Facebook. You'll track him down. And he'll have some really awesome pictures to look at. Needs to get some more on there. Um, the pictures that he does have do not do him justice for everything that he does and that he makes. So go check it out. Give him a like. Um, you might see something you might want to buy. And um, as I showed earlier in the video, uh, my email address is chriscottfineart at gmail. If you have any questions or looking for somebody to do you a commissioned artwork, I'm your guy. Just give me a give me a holler. And also please like and subscribe here on YouTube if you wouldn't mind. So anyway, there I go with my tangents again. Um, Bruce, my stepdad, he not only makes grill sets, but he, he decided to make something a little different, uh, per the suggestion of a customer. Uh, he's making brands, like heated brands that you heat in a fire and, you know, brand things with, Psst, you know, and, um, the suggestion was to make them for people grilling so they can put it on their steaks or I guess pork chops if you prefer, but I prefer steak. But. And uh, he thought it was kind of a fun, cool idea, so he made a bunch up. And we got to talking. I said, well, do you have a tea? Because, you know, tea garden. And he says, well, of course. And he showed me that. And I said, can I borrow that? And he goes, well, yeah, why? And then I told him the idea that just popped in my head about making him a, a prop. And... You thought it was pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Let's turn this up. I only got that at half power. No wonder this is so slow. And um, we can crank this bubby baby all the way up. If it creates pitting, that's even better because we want this texture. It's a steak. It's not like you know, asphalt or something. Or, that was a terrible reference, Chris. I know. So. I do talk to myself sometimes, and I do answer. So, there's that. Okay, oh yeah, going much faster now. Sorry for that, that was really slow, wasn't it? You didn't want to watch a whole video going that slow, did you? You may not be here now. If you feel the need to fast forward, if you find me boring, stupid, whatever, just want to see how I progress, I will not be offended. Do whatever you like. Um, would hope that you stay tuned, though, and like and subscribe and keep following. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah. That's much better. Especially going when, really, when you go really hot like this, it kind of, it, it's such a fast and hard burn that it, it kind of shrinks the wood up and pulls it down away from the, the surface, which is great when doing this on the bone. That was actually a happy accident. I'll take credit for it. <laughs> and... Uh, So yeah, I think that makes it look more real. I'm not going for absolute photorealism. If I was, I wouldn't be necessarily, you know, wood burning it on to a piece of wood. I'd, you know, there's other methods. I don't know, maybe plastic and painting. And, but I just thought this would be fun, and the colors, you know, I mean that was that's my wheelhouse right there. The brand, the browns, the tans, the, you know, sepia tones. Perfect plan, right? And even though pine can be such a pain in the butt to work with, I love the smell when I'm burning it. Um, you will get a lot of people that will talk about safety concerns. The smoke, for one. There are websites... Uh, I don't have the 
the web address on me at the moment, but uh, there are some websites out there that are devoted towards uh, different breeds and species of woods and what happens when you burn them, uh, the toxicity levels of that wood and what it will affect, whether it's uh, an inhalant irritant, an eye irritant, or to, you know, touch skin, that kind of thing. Um, if you're really concerned about stuff like that, go ahead. Um, some people, I think, might make more of it than what is, you know, what they should. Um, I would base it on how sensitive you are. I'm, I'm not going to be responsible. I'm going to say that right up front for legal reasons. I'm not going to be responsible for anybody. If you don't use a fan to pull the smoke away, or an open window, or whatever, um, you're an adult, you can make that rational decision for yourself. I will not be held responsible. There, I've said my legal thing. And, uh, sorry, I'm getting off camera here a little bit, aren't I? But, um, that being said, I'm not going to encourage one way or the other, but me personally, um, if it's moderate to light toxicity levels, I don't really worry about it. Unless it's really getting in my face. And then I'll put like a small fan over to the opposite direction of where I'm burning. And not, not send the wind in this direction. If you do that, it'll cool the tip. Watch this. Because you can kind of see how that gets like an amber color. Maybe you can. Trust me. It's a little bit amberish. If you blow on it, it instantly cools down. And it doesn't take much. That's why <clears throat> wood burning is not a great outdoor demonstration art form. I mean, you need to have some kind of barrier or canopy or walls or something blocking the wind if you're going to do that. That being said, face the fan away and that will pull the smoke away from you. Um, I would suggest that if it is a heavy toxicity level or higher i think there's four different stages light medium heavy and uh die i guess i don't know because I, I i never go past moderate because i just don't want to be uncomfortable but if you get <clears throat> into heavy levels um then use some kind of mask uh or respirator of some sort, uh, particularly if you have allergies, particularly if you're sensitive. In fact, on moderate levels, and this is a suggestion, this is not legal safety advice of any kind, but an idea is if you're prone to sensitivity towards allergies and whatnot, at least a dust mask would be prudent on moderate levels on it, maybe even light levels. Uh, it just depends on how sensitive you really are. If you're really sensitive, this may not be the art form for you. Maybe you're better off just being an observer. So, But if you have a real passion and drive and you live in a bubble, uh, well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Hopefully you don't go in a bubble, that would be awful. But I suppose it happens. Happened on Seinfeld. So I'm pretty look at it. Pretty good. Only problem with this project is I really like T bone steaks. That's my favorite steak. And I'm on a diet right now. <sighs> Again, any questions or comments, drop me a line, email me. You can even find me on Facebook also at, uh, what is that? <laughs> Facebook.com slash Chris Cott Fine Art. 
Cott is spelled K-A-T-T, -T, Chris Cott Fine Art, all one word. I also have Facebook Messenger, if you want to do it that way. And in case you have a question you're too embarrassed to ask. I'm not going to do the politically correct thing and say there's no stupid questions. Usually they're not. You know, there there's a difference between a stupid question and an uneducated question. And there's nothing wrong with being educated, especially if you're seeking an answer. A stupid question is having your cell phone in your hand and asking your wife where your cell phone is. I've done that, believe it or not. You do believe it. Okay. This is harder for me to do this part and have you see it, so. And this is pretty charred. I don't know that there's too much here I need to do. Maybe I'll just focus on these lighter areas. Another interesting thing, and I'm not saying this isn't in any other wood burning videos. Frankly, I've never watched any before. Well, no, that's not true. I've watched some free ones on YouTube, but I mean, like, as far as like an order a how to DVD or I've not seen anything like that. Um, I know they're out there. Perhaps one day I should, you know, maybe show me something I've been struggling with. But uh, on your tips, the closest you get that way. <laughs> to the two prongs um, the easier it's going to be for that area to stay hot the further away you get the further away the the charge has to go to heat the tip and uh, that's why sometimes you'll see me kind of using like the side kind of thing here this I got to get a little bit darker and a little bit more pitted because this is a little you know deliciously nasty area it's got that little bone marrow part that's wonderful most people think I'm sick for eating it but hey it's good and it's got to have something good for you in it right maybe I don't know it tastes good My wife and I first started seeing each other. I told her, I said, uh, and this was, you know, kind of the case with a lot of dates, you know. Um, I was always reluctant to order chicken. And uh, I was always trying to, you know, and always the question come up, man, don't you like chicken? It's like, I love chicken, and that's the problem. They said, well, what do you mean? I said, I don't want you seeing me eat chicken. <laughs> I stopped becoming human at that point. Because I eat the gristle and the knuckle meat and all that stuff. Everything but the bone. Pretty gross, huh? Well, and I have no idea why I'm telling everybody this. But there it is. I've got nothing else to say at the moment, so I'm going to throw that out there. part takes a while. I do have, <clears throat> in case there's any dumb luck that, you know, somebody from Fort Wayne, Indiana, or, you know, fairly close by, is watching this, I have a convention coming up in Pentagon in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Pentagon is... The Fort Wayne Role Playing Convention. Not near as big as Gen Con, of course, but, uh, you know, it's a pretty good con for its size, you know. I actually haven't been there in quite a few years. I've only gone a couple times. Uh, it's at the Green Wayne Center, yes. 
I need reminded of these things sometimes, like the location and the dates, because my you know scheduler isn't here at the moment. She's at the church working, so she works there. But uh, yeah, let's get that a little bit more too. Anyway, at this convention, I will have a booth. And we'll be sharing that with a uh, longtime friend, uh, Jessica Rudinsky, uh, who will be premiering her book. She's an author, uh, the Wormweaver series. Um, we're also each individually working on a side project that, I'm not going to say what it is yet, but we're trying like crazy to get it, our respective projects done by the time of the con so we'll see i i hope it happens um but uh i'm going to turn this off for a moment and grab my trusty little pencil and let's see let's do some char marks here and just do some rough guidelines see everybody has a little bit of confidence issue. I, I wasn't going to do this initially, but I thought, eh, I want to get them reasonably close. It, the spacing doesn't have to be perfect, but I, I want it reasonably close. I want a good Ponderosa steak look to it. Not my favorite restaurant, but it's okay. It's good. No offense to Ponderosa. You can get a good steak there. But my favorite, I think, at the moment, is the Longhorn Steakhouse. That's oh, amazing. So, anyway, uh, back to the convention. Yes, I will have a booth there uh, with my friend, as I said. Um, she'll be selling her books. She might have a short story or two. I don't know, but pretty much... Primarily the uh, the first book of Warmer Weaver, Black Cloud. And um, she's working on book two now. I can't remember the name of it. Um, you can just do a Google search for her. Uh, I think her blog is Scrynet or something like that. Um, but check it out. She's also on Facebook and Twitter. I'm on Twitter as well, but I, I'm a bad Twitter person because, I don't know, I don't like Twitter. <laughs> it's just one more way to try to reach people, though, so I am endeavoring to use it. But, uh, yeah, I don't really have the heart for it right at the moment. Anyway. I will have, <clears throat> of course, artworks. I won't have uh, very much of my uh, theological works of it, you know. Not that there's anything against it, not, you know. Gone are the days of the 1980s and, uh, you know, uh, Christians hating on Dungeons and Dragons. There might be a few still out there. I am not one. It's just, you know. This is fantasy, so I'm going to have my fantasy works there. And uh, as well as uh, some wooden dice. I said I was going to show that on the previous video, and I never did. And I'll probably forget to this time as well. Actually, I probably won't get around to it. But, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. I'm trying to... Make this a reasonably fast project. Um, but yeah, um, and I, as I've explained in other videos, I also etch granite. I do, I'm kind of, uh, you know, amateurish to intermediate level glass etcher. Just because it's not my main thing. Sometimes it's fun to work on, but I, I'm not, you know, you will not get a fine art piece of 
etched glass for me. Not yet, anyway. Maybe in the future. Who knows? We don't know what the future holds. But, yeah, that's going to look sweet. Um, but I like to go to yard sales and garage sales and pick up little bottles, little glass bottles, and turn them into props, potion bottles for Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons, or, you know, whatever your medieval game of preference may be. Maybe it's there's still some ple people out there playing GURPS. You know, I don't know. Uh, maybe there's some LARPers out there. And some of you are like, what is LARP? You know, some of you know right off the bat. Some of you will not. LARP is, stands for live action role playing. And it's pretty much as it's described. You're role playing, but you're actually moving about. And I, I, I've not done it um, just because, I don't know, maybe I'm lazy and I prefer to sit at a table and use my imagination. But <laughs> No offense to LARPers. Uh, actually, I love LARPers because they're good customers. <laughs> no, I, I, I do think it's interesting. I don't know if it's something I would want to do. I'd want to watch, maybe. And, you know, anybody who spends that kind of money on fun little props and things is okay by my standards. I think it's cool. And uh, there was a gentleman who's, I don't know if I ever did get. I probably did, but I'm terrible with names, so I'll never remember. But uh, he ordered a wooden sign off of me. Uh, it was... Was it Lucky Lady? And uh, number seven, I think. But uh, that was a fun little project. I mean, it, it, I picked out a neat little stylized seven font or whatever and tweaked it a little bit, and, you know. And uh, had inverted rounds on the corners and, you know, did the whole thing. And he really liked it. It was a fun little project, uh, and it's basically for a concession stand. But it, you know, it's LARP, so they say it's a tavern. So, yes, I am a nerd. I don't care. I am not ashamed of it. I embrace my nerdness. So, this is going to be pretty sweet. Or savory. Yeah, I think this is gonna come to life quite well. Halfway thought, I, I, I don't know how much time I want to spend on this, but I halfway thought about maybe, you know, kind of doing like a little edging burn line around just to kind of give like a little separation from the, <clears throat> the fat trimming around the steak, you know. The, like, best part of the steak. <laughs> Can't believe people cut that off out of their minds. So. Coffee break. If I seem a little different on my videos uh, for a while, uh, please bear with. I don't know if it'll be temporary or whatever. I'm trying to not forever and in all situations, but for most part to get off of sugar because it's terrible for you. Fortunately, it comes in varieties like coconut cream pie, which is very hard to resist. So, I am on the stevia bandwagon. I got my wife helping me. She is looking up recipes and how to convert to like stevia pastries, which is really awesome. 
because, as I've stated in other videos, I'm a third shifter. I'm switching styluses, by the way. To a medium round. Anyway, I worked third trick, and I have a horrible time the first hour. I crave some kind of treat. <clears throat> and I don't need to be having candy bars and uh, donuts and things like that, which uh, easily accessible. I'm doing this as hot as I can because I want that. That kind of bubbly, kind of textural look. That char tends to look like. I probably should pull this down instead of pushing it away. Those finers, or not finers, but educated artists, you know, who went to art school are probably rolling their eyes at me right now. That's okay. Yeah, beautiful. This is fun. I love this. I hope you're enjoying this. I do plan at some point when I, you know, learn the little movie making, you know, editing tools a little bit better, or <laughs> at all, uh, I do plan on doing a couple, like, fast forward motion uh, videos because especially with wood burning unless you really like the sound of my voice or enthralled by the things that I'm saying and uh, if you say yes God bless you you're a liar anyway <laughs> now uh, hopefully you do I don't know some people like being around me some people find me highly irritating and I'm fine with that so, anyway, I just thought it might be nice for those who want to see the effects a little faster. And there's something cool about watching those, uh, whether it's a painter or somebody works in graphite, you know, uh, or an inker or whatever. I think it's really cool to watch it come to life like that, you know so fast I mean it's it's just amazing even tattoo art and that's nothing against people who have tattoos um, I can actually look at other people's tattoo art and think oh that's pretty cool I just don't want it on my body but <laughs> on other people hey whatever whatever works for you I am not going to judge but uh, but that too I mean that's kind of cool to watch fast forward I think I saw one video like that one time I don't really go looking for it because it's, you know, not really my thing. Of course, painting's not really my thing either, but, you know, if they're doing, like, a fantasy painting, if you, I don't care if it's a tattoo or a painting or, you know, chiseling it out of stone. If you do a dragon, I'm going to watch. So, love dragons. And I just love them more as time goes on. <clears throat> it's probably good this is a steak and it's it's one of the reasons I chose such a cheap wood like pine to do it because um, you know steaks they're just very I don't know textural so it's more forgiving for what I'm doing and I didn't want to spend a lot of money it's just a prop you know not that I don't want to do a good job, I do, but it just wasn't necessary to, you know, get a really nice sanded piece of maple or anything like that, you know. For what I'm working on, this works beautifully. This is actually going very fast, I'm very pleased. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that fat line. If I'm going to do it at all. 
That sounds self-defeating, doesn't it? I just don't know if I should or not. I'm thinking if I dial it down a little bit, don't make it quite so bumpy because that's that's a little bit more clear and defined, isn't it? I'll warn you, my wife probably will be home anytime now. It could be in a couple minutes, could be in an, another hour. It's hard to tell with her, so here somebody hollers out. That's her. I've asked her not to do that, but she may have forgotten. That's okay. I may forget some things every once in a while. Uh, getting a little denser part of the wood right here. It's that little heart of the wood. Can you see that? And I, I was trying to scorch this and I ended up ended up spreading over to here because it's it's denser. That's a lot harder to do. I didn't put a pencil mark here, but too bad. I'm putting, I'm laying some white down there. So there we go. When I'm not videotaping, a lot of times I either listen to music or I watch one of two things on YouTube. For a long time, I was listening to Critical Role, and it's a role-playing thing um, where the people play Dungeons and Dragons, and they videotape themselves doing it. It sounds stupid, probably to anybody who's not a gamer, and pointless, and boring, but it is not. It's a lot of fun. Um... If you have kids, I would have them leave the room. There is a lot of language in that show. So, um, really not meant for kids. But it is, it's pretty funny. I think his name is Scanlan. Uh, he's the gnomish bard. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know, you'd have to see it. Um, if you don't like language, don't watch it though. Because you won't like the show. Um, the other thing I watch, or I, I don't really watch it, I listen to it while I'm wood burning, because watching it would be dangerous, wouldn't it? <laughs> I listen to, uh, it's called Art Casters, that's become kind of a new passion of mine. It's guys around my age, I'll be 43 and I don't want to know what today is, in a few days. Um, <laughs> uh, and these guys are... <clears throat> About that age range. They're, I think, like late 30s to mid 40s. Something like that. You know. Midlifers. Much like myself. And uh, they're artists. Uh, they're really more like comic book artists. Uh, I think one does, deals with uh, still motion video. In fact, that's a project of his right now. Really cool show. Um, very fascinating to listen to. They pick like little topics, which is something um, I try to do a little bit. I, I kind of go all over the place. I keep saying I'm going to um, plan something to talk about, but my scatterbrained mind, I just wind up all over the road. So, what do you think so far? Making anybody hungry? So, but maybe at some point it will. And today was kind of like, it, it was just like a last minute, you know, I'm going to be making this anyway. I thought, oh, what a cool little video project this would make. And I'll let people see the process of it. I actually had planned to videotape some of this in the garage, routing it and all that. <clears throat> but I'm in kind of a, a hurry. Uh, they have a show this weekend, my mom and stepdad, uh, should probably give, you know, a uh, little shout out to my mom. She makes homemade soaps. And if you are in need of homemade soap, uh, just look up uh, Tea Garden Iron Ironworks because I, I don't know how to contact my mom otherwise. Just go through my stepdad and uh, you'll get a hold of her that way. Or you can look up uh, Karen Sue Tea Garden on Facebook. 
but she's really good at uh, soaps that help with allergies and various skin conditions and um, you know all those kind of things anyway they are going to something this weekend it's called stones trace it's very primitive it's period dress uh, colonial times I think I mean their tent actually has to be like period correct tent but the blacksmithing thing of course goes very very well with that uh, the homemade soaps go over really well there it's not really uh, a big money maker one for them they just do it because it's fun I mean and I understand that being a role player I'm assuming a different role for a while it is fun But I'd like to have this ready, because I think they had T-bone steaks back then. <laughs> I'd like to think so. But uh, I'd like to have this ready for them. I think that would be cool. Right? So, that's why I did not videotape out in the garage. I wanted to hurt and get things going. I don't didn't really have time to do, like, three different videos and splice them all together. Or, I know it's a lot easier with software, but as I've mentioned in a previous video, I am a tech tard and it takes me probably three to five times as long to do something as it does a young person, you know, nowadays for stuff like that, video editing, whatever. Because I don't do it, I prefer doing this. It's something you, you have to learn, you know, but I just haven't quite gotten there yet. The more I need to do it, the better, the, the more I'll, you know, address that issue, the more I'll do it, and the more, faster I'll get, you know, just like anything. But, uh, yeah. I've almost got one side done, as far as the crisscross is concerned. See where I scorched it. It gets really hard to see those pencil marks. If you hold it at the right light, you can see it, but I'm kind of in a hurry and I don't want to get in the camera's way. So I'm just trying to... I, I can generally see them, and they're just there for a guideline anyway. You know, it's not the be-all, end-all kind of thing. If there are any residual pencil marks... They can be erased or, you know, another wonderful thing about linseed oil, it tends to remove graphite a little bit, you know, as long as it's not too heavy. I often wonder if, you know, a lot of woodworkers do that, but it does, it kind of pulls it up a little bit, lifts it off. So, we're getting close, folks. I hope you're not bored. I'm going to watch the video. Because my phone has a 45 minute limit. Which actually is pretty good. I've heard of a lot of people where they, you know, I've watched the videos where they got like a 10, 15, 20 minute limit. So I guess I should consider myself lucky. You can build up a residue on your tip and just use like a stone to kind of like knock it off, which I don't have with me at the moment. A lot of times that residue can get in the way. And when you're dealing with like pine, which even the nice boards uh, are loaded with sap. You know, you can get some of that residue on there. I hope everybody can hear me. I know sometimes I talk and I kind of trail off. I am not a professional speaker, in case you haven't noticed.
Can't believe I'm wood burning a steak. It's been fun to tell people about, though, you know, that I plan to do this. They're like, you got any, you know, wood burning projects to do? And I said, yes. And I said, what's up? I said, I'm going to make a wooden steak. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> of course you get your... There was like three people. All of them thought they were, you know, all three thought they were 